Today we're going to talk about algebras of functors. Algebra for a functor is slightly related to high school algebra, but not uh, that's that's not going to be a useful thing to to think about right now. Um, an algebra for a functor is a contract C together with a guarded function passing this contract. Oh, f of c, comma c. So say f is lists. Well, this will take a list of integers and produce an integer. Or if f is the maybe monad, the uh, option functor, then this will go from option c to c. So in this case, we've got option defined here. It's either none or some c. Uh, let's say we do int 32 here, so then we need a function that takes in something that's either none or some integer and produces an integer. So we check, well, is it none? It returns zero, because why not? Otherwise, we'll return the integer that's wrapped up. So here, Stop the well, if we've got seventy eight, it just returns that. Otherwise, none and the empty list returns zero. That's great. But what if we don't want zero as our um, default value? Well, we can replace it with some default here. So this is the same function as before, but it instead returns def. And so in Scala, the option type has this get or else thing where um, you provide the default value. And if it's sum, it ignores the default value, returns what's wrapped up here. If it's none, it returns the default. This works just like we saw before. Say we're doing lists. Here a list is either the end of the list or it's an item. And an item is a piece of data of this type followed by the tail of the list. Okay. So tossing the Debugger there, get rid of this one. Give it a run. All right, so copy down this guy. No, not that. There we go. Over in the console. This thing, list out prod. Well, let's see what prod does. It says if it's an item, you take it and you multiply it by what this function returns for the rest of the list. Otherwise, you return 1. So an empty list is going to give us 1. Um, if we have another element, you know, the tail containing just the last element is going to give us this thing times 1, and so on, so it'll give us the product of all of the items in the list. Here we'll want 5 times 6 times 1 is 30. There we go. Um, if we then step forward a little bit and get this definition of the next algebra, where instead of prod we have sum, we're adding them up and taking zero for the end of the list. And this ought to give us 11, and so it does. Now, this thing wouldn't work on streams because it would try and multiply together everything in the entire stream and would uh, have a stack overflow. Now, times and plus 
with 1 and 0, both of these are instances of a monoid, right? We have some kind of combining operation and some kind of identity element. So we can define list, alg list algebra for any monoid. So you hand me an M, and I will hand you back an algebra for M. Sorry, an algebra for list of elements in the monoid. So, step over a bit. There we go. Mm, copy this guy. So now we're doing concatenation. And we have an item hey and an item jude and then empty string for the end. There we go. So we can not only um, take algebras of lists, but also of trees here. So a tree, in this case, is either a leaf labeled by a value of type C or an unlabeled interior node that has two subtrees. And this does the recursive expansion. So. With lists, you're always doing things to the right. You've got uh, an element and then the tail of the list. Whereas in a tree, the left and the right branch matter. Which one to which power? So um, an operation that's suitable for a tree algebra is like exponentiation here. x to the y is not y to the x, unless x and y are equal. Um, it's not associative is if you do x to the y and then raise that to the z power, that's x to the y times z, as opposed to x to the y to the z power, right? So if this is 3, 3, and 2, then 3 cubed is uh, 27, and squared is 729, right? That's 3 to the fifth. Um, whereas over here, this is 3 to the 3 squared, that's 3 to the ninth. 3 to the 5th and 3 to the ninth are differ by a factor of 81. So, different numbers. So over here we're going to say, if it's a node, then, oops, that should be self of Then we compute the value for each branch and then raise the left value to the right value power. And if it's a leaf, then we just take the leaf itself as, as uh, the value. So we'll run this thing here. And grab a line. Oops. Okay. Forgot to name this function. Function self. There we go. And it again. Get a console here. Great. So here we've got 2 to the 3rd, and then we raise that to the 4th power. So that should be 2 to the 3 times 4 is 12. Sure enough, 2 to the 12th is 4096. If we take this other one, where the parentheses are different, that's first it'll compute 3 to the 4th, which is 81, and then 2 to that power. So that'll be a freaking ginormous number. Right? This is 24 zeros on this sucker. Because this only has 3-ish. Now, this other tree algebra, what it's going to do is check if it's a node. If so, apply the fun this, uh, this 
thing to both sides, get the value, and then wrap them up in little brackets. Uh, and um, if it's a leaf, it'll just return the value. So it'll take what looks like this monstrosity here and convert it into a nice thing there. So sources. Define it, good, and then grab this one. Oops, uh, let's see. JSON stringify. There we go. And similarly. If we take the other one, and render it, we get the other bracket. So algebras are all about taking apart a finite data structure and doing things depending on that data structure. This is incredibly important in computer science, because it's where all of the control um, for a program comes from. So every, um, every control statement, like um, if, that comes from taking apart um, a coproduct, right? So if I've got a coproduct of two items, if the thing is true, that is, if it's a zero, um, it does one thing, otherwise it does another thing. Um, and with this uh, switch case, that's um, you know, arbitrary coproducts. If we have um, parallel processing, now JavaScript doesn't have that built in, but you know, with, when you map something over a list, MapReduce is this massively parallel uh, processing setup. Map is just mapping over a list, and Reduce is a list algebra, right? So you can do MapReduce and get a bunch of you can map over a, a bunch of documents and get a number, and then you can reduce adding up all those numbers, get the sum of the numbers. Um, there's an algebra for um, doing for loops or while loops, rather than being based on the product or the coproduct, this is based on a natural numbers object. Um, if you remember that a product of A and B has these maps out of A cross B, you know, it's this thing with projections, first and second, such that anything else with maps into A and B has a unique map into it. So this is a universal property. There's a similar universal property for a natural numbers object that has terminal object there and itself over here. So given anything else with a map into the terminal sorry, this map is going the wrong way map out of the terminal object into it, so something with a chosen element and a way of going from that element back and getting another element, um, then there's a unique map into n. Sorry, out of n. This is more like a, a co-product than a product. Anyway, it has a universal property. 
But the natural numbers are this special thing. And so when you're doing a loop, a for loop that terminates after a certain number, that's just looking at this um, It's just decomposing the natural numbers. Um, arbitrary while loops uh, are a little more complicated, but it's that same basic idea. Turns out that the while loops are co-natural numbers. It's um, decomposing a stream, basically. So algebras are all about taking things apart and then control flow based on how they come apart. Uh, in the natural numbers, this thing says, you give me your one element, and I'll give you a special number in the natural numbers. That turns out to be zero. And then this one is the successor. If you give me any number, I will give you the one that comes after it. So this universal way of doing this, the one that is most general, is the natural numbers. And that'll give you a for loop with a, a fixed bound. And so every control flow you can think of comes from one of these universal properties and all of the keywords in JavaScript that deal with control flow come from one of these.